Hello, I'm Katherine Martin. Today we're going to be making a um, birdhouse made out of recycled materials. It could also be used as a bird feeder. And depending upon um, what size you what sizes you use, you can um, add seed or just leave it hanging for a wonderful house. So let's go over our materials today of what you're going to need. So we start with a can. Now you can use the larger size can, or you can use a medium size can. Now one thing about this is that you want to make sure when you're emptying the can, you clean out the inside. Now this particular one, notice I cut the front off. But what I'm going to ask you to do is leave the front on and only cut it halfway. So when you cut it halfway, part of this can be bent inside. And thus it creates a nice um, solid front so that the birds can fly in and out or that they can grab food. Um, if you're going to make it into a bird bird um, feeder. Okay, so that's your first item that you're going to need, a can. It's recycled, so you just get it from uh, vegetables or some other materials that you have in the kitchen that you empty it out, clean it, and just make sure that this is not sharp in here. If it is a little bit sharp, you can just file it down with a very simple nail file, which I have right here. Um, an emery board nail file. You just file it very quickly just so it's not sharp so the birds don't get cut on it which most times when you use a, um, a can opener it comes out nice and smooth. Um, second thing that you're going to need is some kind of object to use as what they call a perch. A perch is simply um, a place that your bird or the birds will be standing on. So this particular one is made out of a twig. Um, I have used other items such as um, old popsicle stick. This one came from haagen -Dazs. And I washed it and cleaned it. And then I could use this one as a perch. Um, I also used, uh, this one is um, a metal bar. That I found in my basement. Um, it's a little piece of metal. You could use a flat one as well. Something that has a flat shape would work just perfectly. And the birds will grab onto this. And here's another one. Um, this one is actually another twig. Now these twigs are great because you could just go out in your yard and grab one um, on the ground or in the local park. And um, it needs to be about... Um, four or five inches long maybe and pretty uh, pretty thick like medium sized thickness so that it's kind of sturdy the birds will grab onto it and they'll be able to stand here okay so that's the second part of the um, supplies the third part is going to be your decorations so notice here that all of my um, houses or feeders have handles and they're all made out of rope, twine, cord, or you could use ribbon, or any type of material um, that you might have, like craft string, um, bakery cord, um, anything that you have lying around. You don't have to buy anything. Now, most people have this um, type of string um, cord. It's called jute, and you probably have it in your basement or your garage. Um, it, sometimes they come in these large sizes, and sometimes they come in the small ones. And then I also found um, this one um, is boating cord. Like if your if your family's a boater or has um, materials that they use for boating, you might have this thick type. The thick one 
is very um, useful as well um, because uh, of the size of it. And notice at the end, it's tw most of these are twined in three pieces. And you could separate it at the end like this. Um, okay, so that covers the basic supplies. The other thing you're going to need are um, just regular old kitchen scissors and then um, glue, so a glue gun. Now, if you don't have a glue gun or your parents aren't available to help you with the gluing, you can use uh, Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue just takes a little bit longer because you have to, um, it has to dry a little. And remember, Elmer's glue originally starts out as uh, white, and then over a day, it turns to clear. So that works really well. And then finally, the last thing that um, you might want to put on here are some decorations. So I found these great pine cones in my yard, um, or you might find them at the park. Also, I found a bag of old seashells like that I had uh, laying uh, in the house from the last time I went to the beach. So you might have, um, these are chips actually that I found uh, in the waves. I just rinsed them off, cleaned them, dried them, and I have all kinds of sizes in this giant bag. So you might want to get a whole bunch of these out so that you can glue or paste them as a decoration. So let me show you that also. So at this time you can think about what you want to do or how your design might, um, you might wanna craft your design. So let me explain these few. So this one has decoration with pine cone and this one also has decoration with seashells. Now you can even use um, full size seashells if you have them. Sometimes people have, um, have them left over from vacation. Here's a scallop shell. Or you could possibly have them in your craft room or left over um, from a purchase that someone may have some seashells available. So um, just double check if you have some small to medium sized seashells, it will work perfectly for a um, very nice design. Then let me just show you um, each of the various types of string. This one is made from the medium string, which is this one, it's called jute cord. It comes from this type of package. And this is how it would wind up looking. So this has the thick cord as the handle and the thin cord as the decoration. I'm giving you a sample of how each might look. All right, this one is also a medium type of jute cord that you could use for that style. And then the other, the others that I did um, all came, these few came from the thick cord, the thicker one, the boating type cord. So depending upon what cord you have or what design you have, you could even use, like I said, uh, ribbon, craft strings. If you have um, craft leather, you could use that as well. Um, it comes on like a little spool. You can use that to make your decoration. And this jute cord is just simply going to be used for the outside of the can, as you can see, and the handle. So if you have the medium size or the thick size, um, we're going to think about starting off today with creating the handle part. So what we want to do, and I'm going to put that down for a second. I'm going to show you um, the thick one. And you want to cut a piece that's approximately um, six inches long. So you can actually really measure it with the ruler, or you can estimate. And you want to make it so that it is the length, yeah, I'll show you, of the can with a, the ability to make a little bit of a loop on here. Okay, so very simply, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to 
get to that length that I need. And I'm going to make a cut through here. Now the thick one is going to take a little bit longer to cut through because obviously it's three strands. So I'll just cut this and I'll get a nice piece and the piece looks like this. And then I'm going to show you how or what we're going to work with next. Okay, so you get a nice size piece and at the very end you're going to have to separate them. The reason you have to separate them is because um, they need to lie flat on the can because if you have it big and round like this it's not going to be able to lie flat. All right, so separate the end like this on one side. Grab your can and I'll show you how I did this one. You're going to separate them and then take your hot glue gun and you're going to glue each one down on the edge of the can. Now, keeping in mind before you're gluing that you want to make the handle so that it runs sort of opposite the opening and that it's on the top. So keep in mind the opening where the center is, go up, and that's where you're going to begin um, gluing for your handle. So I went straight up and I found a nice spot right there and I'm gluing. I put a whole bunch of glue right here with my glue gun. I put dots of glue. I sealed it on. I held it for a second or two by, by holding this side. Remember, um, use your parents' permission. The glue gun is hot and have them help you if you're um, if you need additional help. Also, sometimes the metal can heat up, so just be careful that you're not touching the metal part. Okay, so once that is stuck on, you can add additional glue. I'm going to put a little bit more. And then I'm going to press it in. Make sure it's stuck. Okay, and then we loop the handle and we come to the back. You can see this one I already started. And what I'm going to do is, again, open up the string. And I'm going to glue it down. And I'm going to stick that piece right to the back. So notice how it looks. And now that handle is looped. All right, next step. We're going to think about our perch. Our perch needs to be opposite the opening as well, but on the bottom. And it it should be kind of in line with the handle. So think about that, whatever material you're going to use. If you're using a twig, a stick, just make sure it's thick enough. Take the twig or stick, line it up. Take your glue. Make a nice line along the edge. You could hold it sort of like this. Make a line of glue down. Set it. Let it set for a second. And then I'm going to switch. I'm going to come around on this side carefully with my glue gun. And I'm going to put another line of glue on this side. And making sure that it's nice and secure. Remember, the birds are going to be standing on there. So you want to make sure that you get a pretty thick or nice sized twig. Again, if you don't have a twig, you can use a piece of metal. It could be round, it could be flat. You can use, here's a thicker one, a thick twig. So basically all a twig is is a piece of a branch from your backyard that you're gonna use, uh, the birds will be standing on it. They're gonna love that part because that will let them get in and out of the feeder or the house, depending on what you plan to make. Here's a popsicle stick one again. I showed you this earlier. And again, you just put it on so that it is um, even with your opening. And then let me just show you the other one again. The other one was a 
metal. This is metal. So um, I've seen them also with flat metals, and they are really the birds are really loving that. Again, the ability for them to stand. You give them a couple inches here, so this is what about three inches in length. You can make it a little bit longer, but you want to make sure you have enough to glue at the bottom. Okay, so we have our handle, we have our perch. Um, now we're going to be thinking about our decorations. So depending upon what string you have or twine, cord, ribbon, so on, um, you're going to come back to covering, you want to cover the outside of the can. And it's purely for um, decorational purposes. It doesn't really do anything for support but it covers the metal part. Now, if you like the idea of putting extra decorations, you can use other things such as um, buttons, we said seashells, um, small tiny pebbles from your yard. That, those are easy to find. You could get a whole collection of those um, and those could be stuff on or any other type of craft material that um, you think would be um, that would look really fun on your bird house or a bird feeder. So let's get now to um, how do we decorate it. Okay, so here's one that I started, and here's the, the rope or twine or string. And what you're going to do first, it makes it so much easier, is you take a nice long piece of cord, maybe like the length of your arm like this. Maybe it could loop twice. And then you're just going to take those scissors that we discussed and you're going to cut a big piece. Now why am I cutting a big piece off from the roll? It just is for um, the ability to manage it um, easier. Because dealing with this whole big roll and trying to put it onto the, um, onto the can gets um, a little bit tough sometimes. So what you want to do is you want to just cut that piece off. And with, when you cut the piece off, it makes it much more manageable. So what you do, let's get you started. You open up the edges. Let me just move this in so you can see it a little better. Okay. And as you open up the edges, you will have the ability then to glue it. So I'm going to glue while the edges are open right here. And I always start, um, I'm starting it right next to my handle. Um, no real reason why. I mean, you could start anywhere, but I just found that the um, it continues like the look from the handle into the covering of the metal. Now, if you like seeing the metal, it's fine. You could really start any way you like on the side of the can. So I glue it down, I glued it, and then I start um, putting my twine, cord, string, rope, whatever you have, um, and I start feeding it down and around. I loop it through the inside, okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it, um, another one for you right now so I can show you. So you glued this on, then I'm going to loop this around, and I push it back through the inside of the um, opening as such. And I keep going round and round until I use up that particular piece. So I go round, this one went round twice, and then I come to my end. I'll show you where the end is. And the end is right here. I open up the end again so that it's three separate parts. And then I'm going to, of course, glue it again. So glue it once, you know, press it on. Remember, not touching the glue because it's hot. Press it on, hold it for 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds. And then see if it seems like it's staying, um, then add some more glue. Also, when you went around the can, you might want to put little drops of glue in between, like on the middle rope as you go. 
So for example, I'm going to start my next one right here where this one ends. So let's turn the can again like this just to show you an example. I'm going to glue this piece right here. Here's my glue. Watch out for my finger. And I'm going to glue it down right here. Okay, making sure that it sticks. And then every couple of um, inches, and um, you could go back and add a little bit more glue, you're going to put some dots of glue on the can. So right here, I'll put some dots of glue. And then I'll hold this um, the string down, making sure it's sticking. Because you don't want the string to be popping off or the twine, the cord, the rope, whatever it is, craft, the craft um, pieces. Or you could use, like I said, leather, leather strips if you have them from your craft room. Okay, and then I can keep going around the can um, for my next gluing right here. Glue, glue, glue. Okay, and then stick on there. Nice and flat and even like that. Then again, turn some more glue right here. I'm just doing it so that you could see it. So a little bit awkward. And push and stick. Good. Okay, so everybody's getting the idea of that. And let me show you some examples. This was the the large example. Okay. Again, back to the medium twine or cord. And um, the thinner the cord is, the more turns around you're going to have to go around the can. This one was really fun. Um, it was thinner, and I put them uh, pretty close to each other. You could see a little bit of the glue in between. Um, and so if you want to make like a second round and cover some more of the glue up, but it's fun looking that way too. Um, and also at the edges, I came right to the edge of the can, which you can see the string or the rope covers right around the edge. Now you might want to think about covering your back. You could put designs on here. And you can also cover your front if you want to put some more designs on here. Like you could put string across here. You could put um, seashells. So let's take a look at how I did the seashells now. And other decorations you can think about um, putting on yours really could be whatever's in your imagination, anything at all. So on this particular one, I left the whole back of the can empty or open um, so you could see the metal. And then let me show you, I took my seashell chips. And, and if you have the real, um, real seashells or whole seashells, uh, like I, this was almost a whole one. And then I have, um, here's a whole one over here. Gallop shell. Um, you put a little glue on the back. So let's put this here. I'll show you. I'll hold it up. And put some glue with your glue gun all along the bottom. And then you're going to stick it on. In a specific place that you like. That's going to be able to highlight or show off your seashells. So I just kept turning the can very gently around. Um, a couple of them are a little bit at the very edge. You can see and notice that, look, this one is really um, very near the edge, but I like that because it's covering up the metal. So it's all based on what you like or prefer. If you want to cover more metal, you could put um, little sand, little, you could put some glue and then dump some sand on it. Um, you might want to do this over in the kitchen sink or outside in the yard. 
where you can um, use other types of materials. And remember, this is all organic stuff. Well, the can is recycled and the birds love that. Um, so the more natural it is, um, the more fun for the birds. Remember too, on Long Island here um, in various areas, we, are, we keep cutting down all the trees so we don't have a lot of bird homes anymore. So birds are always looking for places to live or um, food to get to eat. Let's talk now about the pine cones. This was just one idea that I had. Um, you could take any type of pine cone. This is a round pine cone. This is a long type of pine cone. And these trees are all around our area. You can just look in your neighborhood or at the park um, and pick up a few. Sometimes they're a little bit sticky because they have sap on them, but um, that really will be fine for the project. And just put some glue on here and I'll show you how. So with your pine cone, you can put a whole bunch of glue all along the um, pieces that are sticking out. And then you could adhere it or stick it together. And that's sort of what I did with this round one. I put a whole bunch of glue on the bottom. And then I held it down like this with my fingers, you know, for 10 to 15 seconds, making sure that it was stuck. And if you find that it's not stuck, you can always flip it over like this and put glue in between. And that goes with all that goes for all the parts. If you find any of the rope is a little bit loose, you could put little driplets of glue in. Same with your perch, you can add extra glue here. Um, and same with your decorations or your handle. You can add extra glue at the end if you find that um, you feel it's not secure enough. Okay, so the handle is great because you can bring this, when, as soon as you're finished, um, you can bring it right out to your yard and the handle works well to hang it right in a tree. Just make sure that it's secured, that it was not going to fall down, um, because if it falls down, um, the bird seed will fall out, or um, if the birds decide to make a nest, they will have to start again. Okay, so there's one style, that one. Then here's the second one that I started. Let me show you that one. And I show I've been showing you these throughout the decorating process and the design process. This one I was leaving open here in the front because I thought I would do some maybe some more small rocks, pebbles, um, buttons, or any other crafty item that you find in your craft room or that you have at your house. Recycled items, anything at all. Um, put some on the back. You could even use natural things like um, dried grass, string, um, other other um, twigs, just to cover it up and make it look more natural for the birds. They love organic, you know, so if it looks natural to them and they'll fly in and out of here, um, you'll see them using it immediately. I have several of these hanging in the yard and right away the birds started coming in. Here's the Um, this again is from the medium sized can. You could decorate this front or the back. Um, so whatever your imagination holds, you can just keep on going until you create um, exactly what you're thinking of that the birds are gonna enjoy. And finally, here's another one. This is the one I've been showing you. Um, this one's partially done. Uh, we could add more rope or string or cord on here. And then we could add a whole bunch of decorations on this part. So the birds are going to love it in your yard. Um, if it's a bird feeder, you just simply tip it and pour the bird seed in and then hang it up when it's ready. Um, so for example, this one, I would just fill it in with bird seed 
and then just hang it. If you're going to make it into a bird house, don't put the bird seed in. Just leave it empty, hang it up, and the birds will start coming uh, around. Well, I hope you had fun today. This was a wonderful craft, and it's helping your environment and also creating a place for those lovely little birds to live, and you'll see them flowing into your yard. Again, Catherine Martin, thanks for joining us and keep on participating at your library.